Dear all, welcome to my YouTube channel Plus Simplify. I am a chartered accountant passionate on income tax and the main purpose of this video which I am going to make today is to let people know that about the basic misconceptions of income tax which they have in mind. So let me take you to the calculations aspect to understand this better. So as you all know income tax is divided into five heads that is income from salary, income from house property, income from business operation, income from capital gains and income from other sources the total of which comes up to gross total income and from there on you will take deductions if you invest in APF, LIC etc. So then you will be arriving at total income. So let me go to the maths of it. So imagine your gross total income is 350000 and deductions is 120000 total income is 230000 though your total income is below 250000 still you have the obligation to file the return of income this is because your gross total income is not below 250000 it is above 250000 but let's take the other scenario that if the gross total income itself is 230000 which is below 250000 in that case you need not file your return of income so the moment people tell the total income is 230000 that does not mean that you do not have the obligation to file the return of income it is only if gross total income is less than 250000 only then you need not file your return of income so that was the first misconception second misconception if my income is up to 5 lakh rupees i will have no tax to pay and thereby i need not file return of income this is one more level of thinking of people so let me give you an example as to why there will be no taxation if your income is up to 5 lakh rupees so let's take this example gross total income is 4 lakh 50000 deductions is 50000 total income is 4 lakh so as per current income tax rates from 2 lakh 50000 to 5 lakh rupees if your income falls into your tax rate is 5 percent and from 5 lakh to 10 lakh your tax rate is 20 percent so since your total income is 4 lakh thereby from 2 lakh 50 to 4 lakh that is 1 lakh 50 you will be taxable at 5 percent and tax amount comes to 7500 but due there is a concept of rebate and what is this rebate it's applicable on three conditions that is you have to be resident your total income should be up to 5 lakh rupees and the limit the rebate is limited to 12,500 maximum so since your rebate is 7,500 I mean since your total tax is 7,500 rebate comes up to is limited to 7,500 and tax payable is zero so let's take another example this gross total income is 5 lakh 70 thousand deductions is 50 thousand total income is 5 lakh 20 thousand this does not mean that only on 20,000 you will be liable to taxation which is the second misconception people have because again let me take you through the maths 2 lakh 50 to 5 lakh it's 5 percent so it will be 1200 5 lakh to 10 lakh which is 20 percent so since you have only income of 2 5 lakh 20,000 only on the 20,000 20 percent 20 will fall and thereby your taxation comes to 4,000 and you will not get rebate this is the question the income tax act you will not get rebate because your income is above 5 lakh so that does not mean that only on 20,000 you will be taxable it will also be taxable from the income of 250 to 5 lakh and then from 5 lakh to 5 lakh 20,000 hence your tax payable comes to 16,000 so this was the second misconception which people had and third misconception is about income from house property so as I showed you the classifications of incomes so let's assume you have income from salary of 4 lakh 70 thousand and income from house property let me show the computation over here you, you are you are having a self-occupied house property which annual value will be obviously zero because you are not earning any rent on them because you are living there right now you have paid the interest on housing loan which is 50 thousand so loss from house property will be 50 thousand because you have paid the interest that 50,000 will be a loss shown in the income from house property and then gross total income will come up to 4,20,000 deductions here will be of housing loan principal so what is the misconception people have is that whenever you pay EMI that is 50,000 of interest and 30,000 of 
housing loan principal so 80000 is always eligible for deduction this is the misconception people have so what you have to keep in mind is that 50000 is the interest on housing loan which will be eligible under this particular head so this is subject to conditions and restrictions imposed under this particular head and the rest 30000 of principal is limited to restrictions under this particular deductions that is total of your deduction should not exceed 150000 so let's say your ppf income is only 1 lakh ppf deduction is only 150000 and your housing loan principal amount is 30000 that time you will not get 180000 as deduction it is only 30000 which you will be getting as deduction so that is the one more misconception that the moment you pay EMI, the whole of EMI is not eligible for deduction. It has to go under particular heads. That is, income, interest will come under income from house property, and the principal will come under deductions. Then your total income will be arrived. This is the third misconception which I wanted to clear it out. And the fourth misconception is that if I am a salaried individual and I purchase a car, will I be eligible for? deduction of interest on the car which the car loan which i purchase so my dear people since the car is purchased for personal use there will be no sort of any income uh, any expense or interest on loan deduction available to you but if the car is used for the business purpose you are not a salaried employee you are a business professional business or a professional employee and you are using that car for the business purpose in that case you will be eligible for all sort of expenses pertaining to that car to the proportion it is used in the business right now one more aspect this is also, this is the fourth misconception people had that always you will not be eligible for deduction no if you are using it for business purpose you will get that um, deduction pertaining to the extent it is used for business there is the fourth misconception so the fifth misconception is that will i be liable for capital gain taxation if i sell my car here again there are two aspects are you using it for personal purpose or are you using it for business purpose if you are using it for personal purpose even if your car is sold for one crore rupees still your capital gain will be zero but if you are using it for business purpose then you will be liable for taxation under the income tax act so there is separate concept called block method of taxation which i'll be taking it in the next session if possible as to how the taxation will be under the business head of income so this is the five misconceptions which people had in their mind which i wanted to clear it out so these are the five basic misconceptions which people have about income tax if you really found useful on whatever i spoke till now please do like share and subscribe that will motivate me to do further videos thank you